Does the Alien franchise need to be more mobile? Can you domino your way through the Resident Evil 2 demo in 30 minutes or less? Is Division 2 helping the Division in the PC game market? All that and much more in this week's Last Week's Gaming News. Roll the intro. <sighs> bigger. 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 I think of myself as like above the average person. The fuck you say to me, you little shit! L. W. G. N. Earlier last week, longtime lovers of the Alien franchise went on a roller coaster ride with the announcement of a new game in the universe. What at first seemed like a sequel to the previous entry in the series, Alien Isolation, fans were immediately tempered when it was announced that the new game was Alien Blackout, a mobile game coming out later this month. What didn't help the people over at Rival Games and Theory Interactive from getting flack is this statement from the announcement. This year, fans of the critically acclaimed Alien Isolation video game are invited to embark on a new adventure with Helen Ripley's daughter, Amanda, by watching, playing, and reading her story as she renews her fight against the aliens after the event of Isolation. 20th Century Fox will partner with a wide range of storytellers and innovators to bring this epic chapter in the Alien universe to life, with even more entries in Amanda Ripley's story soon to be announced. Reading the statement over, some might have been led to believe that this was in direct relations with Isolation, but was somewhat squashed with a tweet saying, Dear Alien fans, there is still more to come very soon. The only direct relation with Alien Isolation that could really be made is the fact that most people will be isolated on their toilet playing the game for 30 minutes or more. Don't forget to wipe front to back. If the Resident Evil series wasn't stressful enough to play, Capcom has announced a small little surprise for the up and coming Resident Evil 2 remake. With the release coming on January 25th, the devs have come out with a literal small demo that can only be played for 30 minutes. Here's what was mentioned in the announcement. Aptly named the one-shot demo, player must take on the challenge of surviving the horrors of Raccoon City in just 30 minutes. If players complete the mission objective under 30 minutes, they can restart the mission until they use up their full time. If players succumb to the zombie during the 30 minutes, they can continue any number of time until the full 30 minutes have been reached. The end of the demo reveals a brand new cinematic trailer exclusive to demo participant. While players cannot restart the playable demo after their time is up, there is no limitation on how many times the trailer can be viewed. In the one-shot demo, players step into the boots of rookie police officer Leon S. Kennedy as he arrives at Raccoon City Police Station in the ultimate worst first day on the job. Leon must survive vicious zombies and solve puzzles to find a safe passage out of the station. With the entire building of flesh-eating nightmares lurking between Leon and his escape while the clock ticks down, players need to be sure they're killing more than just time. Of course, since the demo has been out, it didn't take long for the internet to put their Cheeto fingers on it and crack the game to be able to play more than the time allocated. On the PS4, people are able to create multiple accounts on the system to play the demo over and over, until creating email addresses get tiresome. So if you're ready to embark on the Domino's challenge to give the one-shot demo a try, but instead of having your pizza for free, you'll get the inevitable death and become the free meal for the horde of zombies. It came as a weird turn of event last week when Ubisoft announced that their next installment in their catalog of open-world games, Division 2, would be released on the newly open Epic Store instead of Steam. What isn't surprising at this point is that our lord and savior Gaben is sweating profusely in his undercarriage area due to the fact that this new store is not just some mom and pop shop entering the arena as a new challenger. This is the team behind the unstoppable Fortnite. Fortnite. Sorry, every time I try to say the name of this game, I get a little sick inside. Let's get some reaction from the team at Valve. Like no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 The punches just keep on coming for Steam as Epic Store unveils their new refund policy at the end of last week. Taking a page out of Valve's playbook, Epic has pretty much copied their refund policy, offering 14 days return window with less than 2 hours played. The new policy changes also come with further specification on when things can be returned, when they cannot, and stating that you can refund your purchase for a full refund and immediately repurchase the product as long as it abides by the above guidelines, we do not consider this to be a refund abuse. The only downside if you compare it with Steam's policy is the way you ask for a refund. You can request a refund by clicking contact us on our Epic Game Store and Launcher help page and submitting a refund request. Steam has released a small video to help them get the people back on their platform. The Destiny 2 community felt the propulsion shockwave last week when it was announced that Bungie and Activision are going their separate ways. In a blog post, Bungie has stated, 
We have enjoyed a successful eight-year run and would like to thank Activision for their partnership on Destiny. Looking ahead, we're excited to announce plans for Activision to transfer publishing rights for Destiny to Bungie. With our remarkable Destiny community, we are ready to publish on our own, while Activision will increase their focus on their own IP projects. The planned transition process is already underway in its early stages, with Bungie and Activision both committed to making sure the handoff is as seamless as possible. With Forsaken, we've learned and listened and leaned into what we believe our player wants from a great Destiny experience. Rest assured there is more of that on the way. We'll continue to deliver on the existing Destiny roadmap. We're looking forward to releasing more seasonal experiences in the coming months, as well as surprising our community with some exciting announcements about what lies beyond. Many speculations are at hand for why the split happened, but since we don't deal with rumors here at LWGN, we will assume that Activision was just being Activision. <laughs> Time for this week's Wasteland Watch, where we bring you what happened last week in Fallout news, because people seem to hate on the game so much that it deserves its own segment. What seemed to hold most people's attention in the Fallout universe last week was hackers. Starting the week off, after some YouTubers were showcasing glitches in the game where duping was involved and so forth, Bethesda started to ban these YouTubers from the game because, well, obviously, they were cheating and showing other people how to cheat. Later in the week, it was discovered by other players hacking the game that a human NPC was hiding in the dev room, which is usually accessed through console command and other iteration, but it takes a little bit more doing in an always online game. Of course, the banhammer was dropped once more, and the balance was restored in post-apocalyptic world, right beside the ever-present and infamous power armor glitch. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's Last Week Gaming News. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, we really appreciate it. If there's some stories that you want me to cover, leave them in the comment below and I'll see what I can do with them. And of course, go follow me everywhere, me, Time Gamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and right here on YouTube, where I post multiple videos a week. So thank you so much guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Keep on keeping on. Keep on.